Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, boys and berries, boys and berries. <laughs> this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and here we are. It's uh, Wednesday, Good Friends Day, and that's a good thing because we're going to be talking about friends, or at least building friends, because relationships are key. And my uh, guest on today is Deb, and her last name is Maher, Deb Brown Maher. And uh, she has a book. It's called Sell Like Jesus. Now, who could sell better than Jesus? I think Jesus did a good job of convincing some people, doing some sales, doing some uh, persuasion, if you will. So let's bring on Deb here. Nice round of applause for my friend Deb. One second. There she is. There she is. Hi, Deb. Hi, Brad. How are you? I am wonderful and a half, and so are you. How are you? It's good to be here with you again. I you am you awesome. You said you were busy. You had some other stuff going on. That's a good yes. thing. Yes. Yes, it is a good thing. Yeah, after a while, you know, you go through this COVID stuff and it's kind of, you get uh, stir crazy because nothing's going on. And then all of a sudden when things start happening, you get excited again. <laughs> yes. Yes. And today we're talking about building relationships, which is something that has been a challenge during this year with the virus and masks and exactly. social distancing. And I notice we do get out and go for walks and you're walking down the paths and when someone else is coming, they, they part. You know, yes. you, go across the street. You can't catch it on the internet, I don't think. So I think we're okay. Okay? <laughs> yes. But relationships are very, very important. And I just want to jump right into this so we don't get too long because people have sure. a crunch time. But relationships, I think, is one of the most important things in sales because if you're not trusted, unless you're like a one of those crafty timeshare salesmen where they use that neuro linguistic programming stuff on you. <laughs> but relationships are very, very important. And um, I'm assuming you have some scripture from the Bible that kind of talks about relationships because of your book. I'm gonna put this little thing up here one more time. This is her book, Sell Like Jesus. And I think I've even got I'll put our little uh, tagline thing up there, too, somewhere. This is how you get a hold of it. So, like Jesus. Wonderful. So, so, let me start. Well, so the scripture that I picked for today has to do with the skills that help us build relationships. Um, and it's from Luke 2, 46 and 47. It says, now it was... Av it, so, now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So that passage really stood out to me as I was working on my book because of the order that they mentioned first, Jesus listened, mm -hmm. and then he asked questions. And I think so often in sales, we feel like we have to tell people about our product. We have to let them know all the good things it can do for them. Mm -hmm. um, we have to educate them. And that's the opposite of listening. <laughs> right. Well, they say you got two ears and one mouth for a reason. and. Was it Stephen Covey that said, uh, seek to understand, then to yes. be understood? Yes, I think it's habit number two. Yeah, and I think, it's also important. I think it's also important that a person doesn't get right into, you know, the part about the business. I think there's a lot of relationship stuff that needs to go on before you start talking business. You know, your, your general, uh, you know, just getting acquainted kind of thing before you just jump right in. Well, I'm actually swimming a little upstream on that one that is taught by most sales groups. My feeling is I put myself in the shoes of the buyer. When I'm a buyer, I'm not looking to make friends with the salesperson. Ah. What I'm looking for is, do they have something that's really going to help fix the problem that I have? Sure. Are they trustworthy enough that I believe they're going to deliver on what they say they'll do? And is the uh, product or service reasonably priced? Do I feel like I'm 
they're asking for a dollar amount that I think is the value that I assign to the solution I'm looking for. That's really an interesting point you make because now, you know, I'm 63 years old and I'm kind of like the old school kind of training. So teaching mm -hmm. an old dog, new tricks kind of thing. That makes a lot of sense because when I want something, just tell me what aisle it's in, what side it's on. I'm going to go get it and I'm going to be done. I don't need to hear all this other stuff because I'm, I'm in a hurry. So that's probably even more right. relevant these days when people have limited time and they got so much going on. Just get to the point and, and serve me. Well, and I've also found, Brad, that what people really do appreciate, and I appreciate when a salesperson does it for me, is when they ask me questions that make me think at a deeper level about what I'm trying to accomplish by buying whatever it is. And because I don't know, as the buyer, I might think I know everything about what I want, but I don't know what I don't know. So on the, on the relationship building element of it, I guess that's where some skills, some social skills come in where you yes. don't make that customer feel stupid by asking them questions that they don't know. So it's asking them about what's important to them. So you're not asking them about, about the product. You're asking them what caused you to be looking for this right now? What, what was the precipitating event to use a big word, two words, um, something happened that caused the person to look to buy. It's important to uncover that because that was a trigger that, that caused them to be willing to spend the money at that point in time. Also, asking the person, what does good look like? And if you could get your way what would you expect this product or service to do for you sure. and get them to paint the picture? Because when you have that kind of dialogue, what you're doing is seeking first to understand them, mm -hmm. the deeper level of why they're asking for your product or service. And as you get into that dialogue, then they actually start sharing more from their heart and less from their head and you get a much better understanding of what they truly need. And then as an ethical salesperson, you don't want to take advantage of them at that point. Like I've heard the terms, so like if uh, look, being a man, you look for tools. When someone's going to buy a drill, they're not interested in the machine that turns the drill or the bit. They're interested in the hole that the drill is going to make, right? Right. And what are they making that hole in? And what have they tried to use to make that hole before? And how did that work for them? And if it didn't work, what problem did that cause? And how long have they been without the solution? And what, do, what kinds of problems has that caused? See, the, there's a whole series of questions. Oh, the sense of urgency kind of thing and how important it is and uh, priority yes. and all that. And of course, as you're asking those questions, you have to be listening. And we think we listen. Most of the time, we're listening to try to figure out what it is we're going uh, we to say. Our, our brain is talking to us while we're listening. <laughs> and that's a problem. That yeah. is a distraction. And it will get you off track. You won't single track mind. I'm either thinking or I'm listening, not both. Don't even well, pretend to tell me that you multitask. The whole thing with relationships is so important. Do you, do you have like a, like a, a chapter designated to that in, in your book here? Um, a couple of chapters in the middle of the book really get in more detail about the questions that need to be asked and the, the skill of active listening. So listening with your ears, with your eyes, and with your heart. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... We need to listen between the lines for what people aren't saying, because that can speak volumes. That's interesting because I'm now looking at this from a customer's point of view, and I can remember times when the salesperson was saying things that you're not hearing what I'm saying here at all. They're trying to fulfill the sale, and they're not listening to what my, my issue is. You know, I need a screw that's a exactly a half inch long. It can't be that longer one. It's got to be exactly because that's 
they're not listening to what I need. Interesting. Yes. So listening is actually, I talk about listening being a gift that we can give people because few people really listen with the intent of understanding. And if you are truly listening, it's going to prompt more questions along the lines of what has been shared with you. So what can happen is you can actually walk the prospect through a diagnostic process of sorts to help them figure out exactly how bad the problem is and how bad they want the solution. So the, the price ends up not being even a factor because people are looking for solutions to problems right. or they're looking for a mechanism that's going to help them advance and reach a goal that they're striving for. And if they see that they're going to get that, then the individual is going to say, I, that's worth it. In fact, I'd probably pay a whole lot more for it, but I'm not going to tell the salesperson that. Right. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's interesting in that um, you, you need to be actively listening, especially if you're going to start asking questions and make sure you're not asking the wrong questions because you, you really have to be listening to what that person is actually asking so that you can ask the next question. So it's right. a very attentive kind of stuff rather than someone kind of looking around trying to help other people. They should be very, very focused. And there are really two types of questions, the open-ended questions that start with what or how that help people tell you their story. And then there's a whole series of closed-ended questions that are designed to gather facts. And it, it, so it depends on the industry. It depends on what you're selling. Some industries like construction, if somebody's doing renovations, it's very easy to start talking about, well, how big do you want it? And what color do you want it? And okay, those are all factual questions. They're all important in fulfilling the sale once you've made the sale. Mm -hmm. But they aren't really central to the issue of how you're gonna make that sale. And that has more to do with how the customer is thinking about this renovation. What are their dreams? What do they envision this renovation looking like, being able to do for them? And is it the kind of project that you're even equipped to do? Which you could come in and do what you always do, but if you're not asking those diagnostic questions, those open-ended questions that get the story, then you're missing out and missing the mark in most cases. What, what the, that's sinning, missing the mark. It is. <laughs> don't wanna, it's, don't go sinning on your customer. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, wow, I never thought about that. That's true. <laughs> so building that relationship, what kind of things are like biblically sound for like keeping the relationship? Cause you know, once you made the sale, is it like, oh, see ya, done. <laughs> but you kind of want to have that repeat business because it's it's a exactly. lot of work getting that customer. It's good to retain them and keep the ball rolling. Yes. Um, it, building long-term relationships takes work. And yeah. of course, every relationship has its phases. So when you initially meet someone, you're getting to know each other. You're trying to understand them. You're trying to help them understand what you might be able to provide for them if they decide to move forward. So there's that initial phase of uh, establishing trust and connection. And if you then do end up getting the work, the person chooses you, they say, yes, yay, we love that. Then it's fulfilling, it's delivering. So there's the delivery aspect. And are you consistent in the way you treat that person during delivery? And after right. you've delivered, you have the follow-up. How was your whole experience? And what, if anything else, might we be able to do for you? And who besides yourself should I be talking to? Who do you know that might need what we've done? 
For the referral business. For the referral business. Yeah, I've got a uh, friend that uh, sells real estate and what he does after the sale is he says, we're gonna have a party, a housewarming party. You invite as many people as you want. I'm paying for all of it. I'm paying for all the food. I'm paying for all the decorations. I'm paying for everything. Nice. And when it's over, I'm paying to have it cleaned up so your house is gonna be the exact same way as when it started. So it's beautiful and you're not gonna pay for anything and you're not gonna do, lift a finger. That's so he's a building nice that skill. relationship. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, you've got a wealth of knowledge here. So I'm going to uh, also put on your other website here. It says debbrownsales.com. That's how to get in touch with you aside from your book. In yes. I wanted to talk about how can I make more sales and do it right and without sinning on my customers. Yeah, there is a, a link to set up a free talk. Really, really, truly free. Okay, I'm not going to sell you anything. Call me uh, for a half hour. I will talk with you about any sales subject. Um, there are also resources on my website. I've written numerous blogs, like in the hundreds. Um, so just go to the resources page and use the search bar to search on a topic. It'll make it very easy to find articles that fit with the topic that you're researching. Yep, I got those things on my website too. It's kind of like a little Google on the website. To exactly. Be able to, what the heck are you looking for? Well, one of the things that, that it's important to do in relationship building is making it easy to, to do business with you. Yes. And that's one little way to make it easy for people to learn from the vast resources that I do have. You know, I, that has strikes a chord a little bit with me because I've got a couple things going on. I got to take my sister to the to go in for a checkup, and I went through all those little beep beep beep. You know, press one to do this, and I was like, oh man. And then someone else was having me jump through some hoops with one of those robotic things where it it you ask the question, then it gives you an answer, and it's so there's no human factor to it, and it really it doesn't build a relationship. It actually breaks the relationship. It's yeah, not. I hate those things. <laughs> so Brad, there are, there are three things that I, I want to uh, leave all the listeners with. Um, three keys to building relationships. So the first one is to always put on a servant mindset. Instead of approaching people with what can I get from them, it's what can I give to them? Sure. When you give first, it's amazing how people will then step forward and say, well, well, how can I help you? So approach people with a servant mindset, not with the idea that, that you're going to sell them something or even tell them about what you do. Just be of service in any way that you can. And mm -hmm. out of that natural conversation about what you do can flow. The second thing is to cultivate a habit of curiosity. I, it surprises me how few people are willing to ask questions and learn more. It, it, take the simple, hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? Fine. It's like a ritual. Not be, I'm not asking because I really want to know how you are. Instead, ask it like you mean it. How are you? No, really, what's going on? Tell me. What, what have you been dealing with? since we last spoke. That's a good point. I got a friend that's he's, he's very good at that. He's actually seriously interested in what is your daughter doing? How is soccer going? He's really, really genuinely interested. Yes. So call, it, I call it cultivating a habit of curiosity because I find that if you're not curious, you will not ask anything. So find <laughs> ways to get curious. And I mean to practice this do it even to the ridiculous. Like you go downstairs and your spouse has a, a show on TV. Ask them, what made you choose that show? What is it that you like about that show? What are you learning so far by watching that show? Okay, there's three questions right off the bat, right? Because mm -hmm. I practice doing this, but most people would just go downstairs and say, oh, he's watching X. So speaking of relationships, you can actually use sales techniques, if they're honest, genuine, sincere, to bond your spousal relationship. Absolutely, because they're based on asking good questions and listening. Yeah. Right? 
Yep. You want to have that recurring customer for many, many, many years. <laughs> yes. So what's and number three? Number three is the consistent follow-up and follow-through. Oh, sure. It's rare that you, we make a sale on the first connection. There are usually multiple touches that need to be made. Many, uh, in, at this point in time, the first five or six touches might be electronic without dialogue. Right. But you might need to do that electronically to earn the right to have this kind of conversation. So the follow up, when someone does express an interest, when they do send you an email, respond to that email. When they do ask a question, get back to them with an answer. When you have had a conversation, connect with them afterwards and thank them. Huh? Thank them for meeting with you and ask if any questions came up after you left. It right. may open the door to more dialogue. And of course, do what you say you're going to do. So if you have follow-up tasks that you have to accomplish, make sure you do those because that is honestly, it's the quickest and easiest way to show integrity and build trust. Do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it because so few people do that these days. It's sad. So you I know, I think uh, they don't do it because it's so easy. Oh, it's just an electronic connection. It's no big deal. We'll reconnect later. They're, they're really dehumanizing people and they got to realize that on the other side of that, it's a real person. And for those people who do networking, they go to networking events, even if it's on Zoom, if you hit it off with somebody, make a point of, checking in with them. If you have an email address, send them a quick note. If you have a, a phone number, give them a quick call, even if it's just to leave a voicemail. That I can't emphasize enough the importance of the follow-up and the follow-through. Sometimes salespeople who do that follow-up, they, they get the work simply because they're the only ones who did follow well, I think the ones that don't listen to it, I think they might be hearing it wrong and they're thinking you're supposed to follow up. <laughs> Maybe they're hearing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, that uh, could be. Well, Deb, this, we're at about 22 minutes here, so I'm going to close this one down and beam it up to the Sounds universe. Good. And um, I want to also uh, pop that up again, your book, Sell Like Jesus, right there, uh, .com. Is there anything else you might want to share with us before you go off to the beginning? I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate this interview style and uh, giving me a chance to get the word out to people in a, in a very relaxed setting. Yep, it's always good to be casual. So I'm going to put you into the green room and then I'm going to close it off. If you want, we'll have a little bit of a conversation, but I'm sure you got things to do, as do Sounds I. Good. But uh, I'll thank pop you, in. Brad. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Well, there you go. That was Deb Brown and Deb Brown Maher, and she is this book. I think it's fascinating how um, she's got this blended because I've learned a couple, a lot of different things because I'm kind of old school about that ABC, always be closing and all that kind of stuff and that establishing rapport. And that does make a lot of sense these days that I don't have time for small talk. I mean, we can do that if there's time, but I'm, I'm here to get my thing. I want to get it and get up, get home. <laughs> so let me pop up here. Uh, we've got another one of these we're doing next Wednesday. And that one's going to be on closing that sale, that follow-up kind of thing. So I appreciate you taking the time. This has been a lot of fun. I'm going to sign this off. If you want to look for it, it'll be on my YouTube channel, or you'll be finding it out and about on social media. So peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well. Be happy, be kind, be nice. <laughs> Peace.